Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, weekend is done. Finally, back to work. Yeah. Uh, sometimes my weekend is too long, and, and this is one of them. Uh, actually, it was kind of weird to go back to a regular weekend again. Because we, we had the holidays. We had long weekends. Mm-hmm. And then uh, last week we had, uh, you know, mon- Monday our daughter didn't have school. So it was kind of a short week again. So it's kind of nice to, you know, get back to the swing of things. Maybe things will get normal again. <laughs> I don't know. Coming up later in the program, we've got a guest. I'm going to be talking to a guy by the name of John Reeves. He's in England. Uh, and he's got a book called My Name is Tom. I'm going to ask him why it's not My Name is John. But we'll find out. It is illegal to drive a car in reverse in Glendale, Arizona, Heidi. Okay. How do they get out of the garage? Right. It's kind of a weird law. I think what they mean is it's illegal to drive around town in reverse. <laughs> Which makes sense. And if you have to put a law in the book saying that, you got problems. <laughs> and a new study says that testing can increase weight problems. Yeah. I'm sorry. Teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say what? I read that wrong. Teasing can increase weight problems. I would. I could see that. That makes a lot Causes more sense depression than depression and makes so. you want to eat. I could see that. <laughs> I'm going to go check my prescription on my glasses. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday, January the 28th. Today is National Handwriting Day. You have really good handwriting. I don't. I don't yeah, like. Do. I don't think anybody likes their handwriting. But I, I, I don't like my handwriting. handwriting could be a font. What are you talking no, about? No, my handwriting is terrible. No, you like write recipes down and stuff, and and then you can actually come back and read them and cook that. <laughs> Have you seen my handwriting? Half the time I'll say, "Hey, we got a guest today." It's Yours could uh, be a Mercy font. Schmier I think Murder. it's called Serial Killer. No, I can't even read my handwriting. Uh, today is also Snowplow Mailbox Hockey Day. What the heck is Snowplow Mailbox Hockey? I have no idea. Apparently, they need the awareness put in there somewhere because uh, I have no clue what that is, but. Whatever it is, it sounds interesting. Snowplow Mailbox Hockey Day. I'm going to just stick with the handwriting thing. Coming up, we got a lot of special stuff going on today. We'll tell you all about that. A lot of fun things to talk about in a bit. John and Heidi. It's a new year and many have made resolutions. Have you? If your resolution is to quit smoking, I want to help. This is one of the biggest resolutions every year. I met a hypnotist that's been able to help people with this one. He can send you a Stop Smoking Hypnosis CD program that you just listen to and it's designed to help you quit smoking. It's available at a discount for our listeners right now at Radiosavings.com. Get the tobacco-free CD program for just $40. That offer is available right now at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. A Romanian man is suing his former employer. Guess why? Why? He said he had to work too hard and too long. Okay. Well, if they're overworking him, he... Well, let's take a listen to what happened here. Sandu Grustaya, I probably didn't get any of that right, says the amount of work that he did for Insta Electric was strenuous And the hours were so long that he did not have time to marry or play chess. The 67-year-old engineer, who is now retired, wants nearly $43,000 in damages for working so hard that he was too tired to do anything when he got home at night. So, I wonder how much of that is for missing out on marriage and how much of that is for missing out on chess. I... I, I... (laughs) I guess I would have to see how many hours they had him working. Well, I mean, it doesn't if, say that in the story. I know. It's hard for me to give an opinion, though, if I don't have all the details. Let's just say that it was 40 hours a week and uh, probably... It was 40 hours a week. There's time okay, then to let's do say whatever it was you want. 80 hours a week. Okay, if it was 80 hours a week, he has a right. But he should have quit his job. And if he was that miserable, At he could have left. Day, when free it comes will, right you're down not to a prisoner. It. Yeah. If you didn't like your job, right. dude, you should have quit. Yeah, that's right. At the end of the day, that's what it all boils down it to. It does. Life you choices. Know? And Because and, I, I work longer hours than I really probably need to a lot of the time. It's because I goof around too much. I do get sick of, of people blaming other people, everyone else Everyone's for their problem. choices. I'm single and it's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not their fault. And you didn't have time to play and chess? And if they were overworking, you'd get a different job. Yeah. That's Sorry, the thing I don't but... understand. 
I wonder how he'll do this. Unless is, they were paying him well enough that he didn't want to get a different job. And in that case, he's already been, in his mind, compensated for his time. Well, he's 67 because now. Because he didn't quit the job. He's retired. He's asking for $43,000 in damages because he didn't have time to get married or play chess. Well, at least it's not. I mean, at least what he's asking for isn't like $10 million no. or something. It's not an unreasonable amount so you're just saying they should cut him a check and get it over no with. i'm just okay. saying but at least he's at least he's trying to be what is the value of a marriage forty three thousand dollars <laughs> you know it's true because you heard it on the radio john and heidi. the john and heidi show is brought to you in part by the keystone treatment center this is your brain and this is your brain on drugs We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. A dude walks into a courtroom with a big bulge in his jacket, and it was not (laughs) a gun. That's what they thought at first. Drug possession defendant Christopher Johns on trial for, uh, this was in Michigan, Pontiac, Michigan, being searched without a warrant. Uh, Prosecutor said they didn't need a warrant because there was a giant bulge in his jacket. It could have been a gun. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, it was not a gun. Guess what it was, Heidi? What was it? Some cocaine. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, dude. The judge discovered a packet of cocaine in the pocket and laughed so hard he required a five-minute recess to compose himself. <laughs> he was again. He was there because he was there as a defendant for drug possession, and he showed up with drug possession. Wow. I'm assu- I'm assuming that his attorney quit right in the middle of that. He's like, Your Honor, I give up. I I mean, what kind of defense can I possibly give you now? Wow. My client is innocent. Okay, yeah, I don't even believe that. Kids, that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. Smoking can be hazardous to your health. Just ask this guy. An 80-something, I'm sorry, this woman. An 80-something woman had her gas stove on, but none of the burners had ignited. That was about to change, though. She decided to go to the back door and light up a smoke. Well, she also lit her house up. The ensuing explosion ripped through the first floor and caused extensive structural damage to the apartment, blowing out the windows, ripping off the back door, even lifting the roof. (laughs) Amazingly, the woman only suffered minor burns to her hands and face. Hmm. I mean, that is unbelievable. An 80-something woman going for a smoke. She had turned on all of her gas burners, and but didn't light them for some weird reason. What was that all about? So her home was filled with gas when she lit that cigarette, and she had quite the uh, quite the surprise. So she probably didn't even realize they were all on. Yeah, honestly, if she hadn't not. lit them. <laughs> I'm assuming not. Coming up, we have your scoop of the day. That is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. An escaped prisoner was found in the attic manhunt for an escaped prisoner in Germany was brief. The search began when wardens decided to check on an inmate after he failed to show up for breakfast, only to find the bars of his cells were sawed off. Oh, where did he get us? The prisoner was found hiding in the prison's attic. I don't know. I have no clue. He probably uh, made a what saw. What was his plan at, once he got into the attic? I don't know. He's like, hey, I'm going to get out of my cell and I'm going to hide in the attic. Maybe he was just going to live there. Uh, what he should have done is gone into the sewer. I saw a Shawshank Redemption. Remember that, that movie, A Hider in the House? Yeah. That was a great movie. Gary Busey, wasn't it? It was Gary Busey, yeah. and he was hiding in the attic of somebody's house. He it was, was super creepy. creepier now than he was then, because <laughs> that dude is... Well, I saw him on Celebrity Apprentice a few years ago. I would not want that him in my attic. That was a great movie. That was. Hey, University of Washington researchers say that your sense of humor declines with age. Not mine. Yeah, mine either. <laughs> <laughs> my sense of humor is sharpened with age. <laughs> I find things humorous now that never used to be funny. <laughs> Uh, New statistics show that eight people in the world are as wealthy as the poorest 3.6 billion people. So the poorest 3.6 billion people have less than the top eight people 
Isn't that crazy? Top eight people. The top eight people in the world. That is crazy. Um, survey found that the most useful thing that a student learns while at college is how to do laundry. That is the most useful That's thing. That's really sad. Hey, kids, I'll teach you how to do that if you just stay home. How's that sound? I'll do that for Save a you. third of what you paid for your college degree. Whoa, you know what? We, <laughs> should, we should actually start a laundry course. I'm not even kidding. We'll have to think of that because, boy, if they're spending all that money just to learn how to do laundry. And, heck, if you if you do the John and Heidi how to do laundry course, <laughs> we'll throw in the how to make the best ramen noodles in the world course for free. Huh? Huh? No? Okay. That is not an offer, by the way. I just want to make sure. <laughs> you know I'm just kidding, right? A woman in China made up a story about murdering her soon-to-be ex-husband to get herself jailed because she needed a place to stay. Aww. Now she's serving 10 days in police detention for filing a false report. So her soon-to-be ex-husband, she was breaking up with him. She went to the police and said, I killed him. And then they found out that, no, you, you didn't kill him. She's like, well, I wanted to. Can you give me a place to stay tonight now? So that's kind of sad. That's actually it? really sad. Good news, bad news regarding women and equal pay. The good news is the World Economic Forum says it will happen. The bad news is, uh, based on their guest, it's it's going to be happening somewhere near the year 2186. 2186. So we're only 170 years away. I don't know what idiot did this survey. I don't, I don't notice... A problem in that area. Uh, I, 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 whatever. I don't know. I'm it, not even going to. It depends on the field. And I know there's some fields where women make uh, equal and there's some where they make more. And if you ask the people that did this survey in the year 2186, it's all going to be equal. So there you but go. you can't always pay everybody equal, equal because some people perform better than others and deserve more money. Okay. So you can't. Say, I'm going to pay everyone, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you show up, whether you don't, you're going to get paid the same amount because I don't want to get sued hey, for dude, being sexist. There's a dude that was suing because he was working so hard, he didn't even have time to get married. So, you know, you, 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 never, you never know what's going to happen. That's ridiculous. Danish researchers, let's move on. They found that the thinner a person's thigh, this is meaty part of your right. leg right here. <laughs> Maybe the fact that I said it was meaty tells you that my thigh is not so thin. <laughs> The Danish researchers found that the thinner a person's thigh, the greater the risk of heart disease and premature death. I disagree thinner, with that completely. The person's thigh, the greater risk. That's what it says. <laughs> Things are different in wherever Danish people come from. <laughs> Daneland. Where, where do they is come from? Denmark? Denmark? Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Wherever they come from, things are different there. <laughs> Danish land. I don't know where the Danish people are from. Uh, you know, you knew that right off the top of your uh, head. I'm actually impressed. They're not called the Dens. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I never really thought about it before. <laughs> hey, one quick thing here. A Utah family decided to have some fun this winter, and they made an Olympic-level backyard attraction at their house. I've got a video of this on our Facebook page. It took 10 hours to put it together, and uh, it takes about 20 seconds to ride this 300-foot-long luge that they built. If you've got a moment, it's worth, a, it's worth taking a minute to watch it. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Radio advertising works. When it's done right, it works even better. There are many things you can do to get a better response, and shouting sale really isn't the best thing, believe it or not. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? If you're trying to get people to remember your company, consider a jingle. We work with one of the very best jingle companies in the business, and we'd love to use music to help you grow your company. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. Thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show. We've got a special guest joining us right now, the author of a book called My Name is Tom. It's not Tom, no, it's John. John Reeves. John, how are you, sir? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you very much, John. How are you? So, i got to ask you, the name of the book is My Name is Tom. Why not call it My Name is John? Wouldn't that be a little easier since your name is John? It would make it a lot easier for the people that I know. Yeah, that's confused a lot of people. Um, I think, really, although the book is very autobiographical, um, I didn't really want it to be about me. So, I created this character called Tom, who really is a character based on who I wish I was at the time, when I was actually, you know, the, when the actual story is about. 
wasn't really that person. I think it took me 25 years to work out how to be that person. So I thought, well, I'll write a book from that perspective then, shall I? So now let's talk about the book, My Name is Tom, and let's talk about why you had the opportunity to write this book. The thing that's interesting is this book is a novel, but there are parts of this book that are based on things that really happened, and it's a story about bullying, and this is a story that is inspiring people. That's got to be a really cool feeling. Let's talk a little bit about the book and, and where it came from. Well, it, it's great to know that. I mean, it's when I, when I was writing the book, I don't think I ever really realized it was going to inspire people that have been bullied in their lives. Um, I think it was just such a huge part of my life when I was growing up that if I ever wrote a book that was based on my own experiences, then it would be a major part of it. I think it was when I actually finished writing the book and I read through it, I realized that it was probably the major story in it. And, and, and if people are reading it and they're actually t- t- seeing a way to deal with their bullies themselves, then, well, that's job done for me. Really, that's, that's, that's what I intend. Well, I think it's really cool that you put this story together. I'm reading a statistic here that says over 30% of students are either being picked on, they're being bullied, or they are a bully. So when you put this book together, who is it really geared towards? Is it geared towards maybe uh, people who are being picked on, or is it geared towards kids who are being bullies? Or is it kind of geared towards both? I think it's for both, really. I mean, the, the people that are actually bullying people themselves, I think they would read it. And they would uh, identify with characters that they'd rather not be in the book. And then I think people that are being bullied themselves would read it and hopefully be able to deal with their bullies more effectively. I mean, at the time, I think um, I, I based my thoughts too much on trying to fit in with the people that were bullying me and maybe even longing in some ways to actually be more like them. Um, and then I think, like I say, it took me 25 years to realize that actually that wasn't the right thing to be doing. And, uh, and now, uh, you know, I've written a book as if it's me at that age, but with the 25 years of experience of how to deal with bullies. So I think it's both, really. I think, I think if, if anybody took anything positive from it, then I think that would be a great thing for me, especially along those lines. It's a very important subject to me, but that's not the main part of the book. It's a comedy more than anything. It's a coming-of-age story. It's a music story. And then with a few twists and turns, which I won't go too far into because I don't want to spoil it for readers. The topic of bullying is, is such an important topic right now, and that I thought was very interesting about this story. But also something else that I thought was kind of interesting is the fact that there's a, almost its own character in the book is this record store. kind of revolves around this record store. Let's talk a little bit about the record store and, and why that's such an important part in this book. Okay. Well, I mean, I, when I was younger, um, I, I struggled to fit in with the, with the group of people that surrounded me of the same age. Um, I became friends with people that were, were older than me, one of who worked in a record shop. Uh, and another one was uh, the boyfriend of my sister, a uh, sister I didn't get on particularly well with, but I did get on well with her boyfriend. And we ended up spending so much time in the record shop together, exclusively talking about music all the time discussing it and then after a while I suddenly realized that there were people a lot older than me that were actually taking my lead on music they were looking at what I was buying what I was listening to and then they were doing that themselves and then I was comparing that to the idea of people of my own age doing nothing but looking down their nose at me and and bullying me effectively whereas these people that were a lot older than me actually had a lot of respect for me so I spent a huge amount of time in the record shop. I built a record collection that I nurtured and I loved. Um, And then certain things happened in the late 80s when I became involved in my own musical culture, having watched uh, punk and new wave people growing up in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, And then I got a little bit lost in that and I ended up selling all of my records in order to fund that lifestyle. And then when I became disillusioned with that, I then moved on and I had to get those records back. And... uh, I have managed to do that, and a lot more as well. That's really cool. And like I said before, I think in the book, you could almost say the music store and the music itself is kind of like its own character, really, in the book, isn't it? It is very much so, yeah. It's it's the music I loved then. It's the music I love now. I think, to be honest with you, I think I probably love the music that's in the book and, and all 80s music more now than I ever did then. Uh, the, the primary bands that, that are discussed in the book are The Smiths, The Cure, uh, New Order, Joy Division, uh, The Jam, various other sort of alternative bands of the early 80s. But then I think as I've grown up, I've realized that a lot of, a lot of the more commercial bands of the 80s, I absolutely love. I mean, uh, for example, the album Tears of Fears, The Hurting is an absolute classic. 
It really is. It's an album I can listen to forever. But yeah, the, the music is, is my life, and it's Tom's life as well. And, uh, and every, everything I do, and every, every, the way I dress, the way I look, the way I, I act, the way I talk, is, is to do with the music that I love. And it's the same with Tom as well. Again, our guest today, John Reeves. He is the author of a book called My Name is Tom. It's a novel. And if maybe someone listening is saying, I'd like to get a copy of that, where can they find this book, John? I think the best place to get it from is either the publisher's uh, website, which is Author House, um, or on Amazon. Um, uh, it's available on Foils, Collins. Um, I saw it on a Walmart website the other day. I, th- I think the best thing for readers to do, or potential readers to do, is to, to Google it. If they Google John Reeves, my name is Tom, they'll come up with various ways in where they can uh, get themselves a copy. Well, I think it's a fantastic story, and thank you for taking the time to put the book together, and thanks for chatting with us. I guarantee you there's somebody listening that knows a bully or somebody that's being bullied, or maybe a bully that's also being bullied because sometimes they're being a bully because they're being picked on. So just think of how awesome it would be if that person would you know, have a life change because of your book. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of bullies don't really identify themselves as bullies, especially when they're within a group of bullies. I think there was um, there, there, there was a scene in uh, The Big Bang Theory once where uh, um, I, th- I think someone just didn't actually realize that they were bullying. They actually thought that because they and all the rest of the bullies were having such a good laugh at this one person who wasn't enjoying their life whatsoever, they got the impression that they weren't bullying that person, whereas actually for that one single person on their own, they were having an awful time of it. So, yeah, it's, it, it's, I think it's something that people don't necessarily identify with. Um, and then when they do realize, I think they're, they're quite horrified. And if they're not horrified by it, then, you know, they should be. Again, our guest today has been John Reeves. He is the author of a book called My Name is Tom. It's a novel. And if you'd like to know more, there's a website, mynameistomnovel.com. Thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. When is the last time you changed the air filter on your furnace? Now, don't be embarrassed. That happens to a bunch of us. The furnace filter should be changed often. This will help your heating and cooling system run more efficiently, and it'll even extend the life of your system. Now, there's an easy way to make it happen. Filter Easy, a new subscription service that delivers your size filter right to your door on the schedule you choose. It's easy. Filter Easy, one less thing to worry about. Learn about a special offer available now at radiosavings.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? To create the color in a conventional CRT television, there are three electron guns. They fire little electrons. That's kind of cool. What's a CRT gun? Um, I don't know, but it shoots the color into the screen. Okay. I think it's three different colors. Fun fact for you, Heidi. <laughs> What's that, John? Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho was originally released in what year? Uh, 71. Wrong. No, 1959. Oh. Yeah. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The month that we're in right now, January, is named for Janus. You know who Janus is? I have no idea who Janus is. J-A-N-U-S, Janus, the Roman god of doors and gateways. Okay. Yeah, because it's like, you know, opening the gateway to a new year, I think is probably why. I don't know. At least we'll go with that. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Nine out of ten people use the word shy to describe themselves. Heidi, are you shy? I am shy. I am. Can you believe that, people? <laughs> Funny thing is, she really is shy. Would you describe me as shy? No, yeah, not even a not little. E- <laughs> I talk to strangers, even when they don't want me to. <laughs> and our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The animated film Thumbelina is not a Walt Disney production. A lot of people think it is, but nope, it's not. A couple of fun facts for you right there on a Monday. John and Heidi. This is Richard Lustig, the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. They do all the work. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, to give yourself the best chance of winning, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that website is RadioLottoPool.com. 
Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Studies show that women suffer from insomnia more than when uh, men do. I would agree with that. Do you think that I'm you stay awake all, more than I do? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, always yeah. tossing and turning in your son logs like crazy. <laughs> it doesn't take me long to fall asleep. <laughs> it doesn't. I walk it. Usually by the time I get to bed, I am so exhausted. You've already been asleep on the couch for about two hours before you <laughs> come to bed. That's true lately. <laughs> I'll sit down to watch TV and I fall asleep. And then she just leaves me there. <laughs> You don't even try to carry me to bed. I used to try to wake you up. It just I just don't even anymore. Do I ever leave you laying there sleeping or do I pick you up and carry you to bed? You don't ever carry me to bed. I, always I would do. knock you out if you tried to pick me up and carry me to bed. Well, here are some tips for you people who are suffering from insomnia from the Mayo Clinic, Women's Health Source. They say curb the caffeine. Um, that could be a problem. We usually brew a pot of coffee right, <laughs> right before, before bed. I can't understand why I'm not sleeping. You want some coffee? Could yeah, be this espresso. Good. They say get rid of coffee. Also get rid of tea. Get rid of sodas. Any caffeine, that's not going to do you any good. Tea. I thought they said one of those teas, like chamomile, helped chamomile. you sleep. Yeah, that's different, I think. I don't know. Uh, another thing, stop smoking. Nicotine impairs your ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. Watch the alcohol. Why are you <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Because if you're not drinking coffee, you're drinking alcohol. And I mean a lot of it. Get moving. Lack of physical activity during the day can help you have problems sleeping at night. Eat dinner earlier. I agree with that one completely. Eating too much too close to bedtime is not good for you. And the last one, skip the nap. Naps can actually make it harder to sleep all night long. So you Mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm going to catch a couple Z's here now that I got some time. No. What's going to happen? You're not going to be able to sleep. The other day, I fell asleep. Like in the middle of the day, we were home. It was on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had gone out for lunch with our son, and then we came home, and I was like sitting there, and I just kind of zonked out for like three hours. You did. I woke up. I'm like, "What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it still Saturday? How did this happen?" All right, couple of tips right there from those smart folks at the Mayo Clinic. John and Heidi. It's a new year, and many have made resolutions. Have you? If your resolution was to lose weight, you're not alone. This is the single biggest resolution every year. And every year, millions of people try, and many fail. I met a hypnotist that's been able to help people with this one. He can send you a weight loss hypnosis program on CD that you just listen to, and it's designed to help you reduce the cravings. It's available at a discount for our listeners right now at Radiosavings.com. Get the weight loss CD program for just $50. That offer is available now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. What happens if you don't like to swallow pills and you don't like to get poked with a needle, but you still need some kind of medication? Is there another way, Heidi? Gummies. Uh, there is another way. No, it's not even gummies, although that's true as well. Spray it on. Yeah. We spray on what? deodorant and bug spray and suntan lotion. Soon, you'll be able to spray on your medication. Scientists in Australia say... They are in the final stages of developing spray-on medicine. It's great news for people who cannot stand needles and injections and pills and all of that. The spray would cause less discomfort than needles because the body disposes some chemicals before they even reach the bloodstream. They would also give better delivery than pills. Professor Bill Chalman and his team of scientists at the Monash University in Melbourne. Do we say how, do we say it right here? Do they say Melbourne there or do they say Melbourne? I think they say Melbourne. I think they do. Anyway, that town over there in Australia, they found a chemical in sunscreens allowed other drugs to pass through the skin. So they uh, started working on sunscreen and they said, hey, maybe we should start doing this with all of our drugs. So pretty soon you'll be able to I'm get not, your drugs. I'm but, just not sure what I think about that. Um, I don't like sprays, so I would rather go with uh, any of the others. I like the gummy idea that you had. Let's go with that. I like yeah. gummies. Coming up, we're going to talk about a 10-year-old that did some interesting stuff. It's on the way. Interesting story here about a 10-year-old, Jack Wadsworth. He was run over by his mother's minivan. Oh, my gosh. We just talked earlier this week about, or it was last week, I guess it was, about a little boy. Yeah, and uh, it says here, he was playing in the yard with his younger brother. He decided to hide in a leaf pile, and his mom was attempting to park the minivan in the driveway because some cars were blocking her way. She drove through the lawn and over the leaf pile. At first, she thought she ran over the cat, Much to her horror, she found out that it was her son. He was coherent, was not bleeding. Family members uh, packed his face with popsicles, the coldest thing they had, and waited for paramedics to arrive. He was released from the hospital in a day, came away from the incident with only some facial bruises. Paramedics told the family that uh, if the surface had been concrete instead of dirt, 
his injuries would have been very severe. Jack's new nickname is Speed Bump. Oh, that's not nice. Don't no, call him that. Nice. That is horrible. I that couldn't even imagine. Oh, that would just be the worst thing ever. Yeah, it would be bad. Well, the good news is he's fine. So that's fantastic. Like the kid that got his head run over last week, we talked about a boy that got his head run over. Yeah, by his And grandpa. he's fine. So it's amazing that there's somebody looking out for these guys. Coming up, we're going to talk about being concerned about cleanliness. That's on the way. John and Heidi. It's a new year, and many have made resolutions. Have you? If your resolution was to quit drinking or to kick a drug habit, we want to help. Our friends at Keystone can help you determine the best program for your particular needs. This is something that really matters to me. My father was an alcoholic. He lost his battle at age 49. That's just too young. If you're searching for help, I hope my friends at Keystone can help you find the help you're looking for. Call 844-204-1055. That's Keystone, 844-204-1055. John and Heidi. I've heard the saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. Have you heard this? I have heard that. I think I might have heard that from you, Tidy Heidi. (sighs) Uh, my beautiful bride over I'm here. I'm tidy, not clean. There's no, you're, a big difference. You're, you're tidy. Everything's got to be like yeah, if I... I'm very, leave very anything, tidy. Sometimes I'll sit things out just to see if it'll get a rise out of you. Like I'll put my shoes right where they shouldn't be to see if you'll say something about it. And you're like, what's the deal with your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just trying to get some attention, Heidi. <laughs> but some experts say that Americans may be too concerned about cleanliness. Too concerned? Yeah. And it's... Not the kind of stuff we were just talking about, but more like the antibacterial kind of cleanliness. We're so clean, it might actually be bad for us. All that scrubbing and sponging may be weakening our immune system, killing off helpful germs and spurring the growth of growth of mutant strains of super bacteria. I'm just going to interrupt you for just a second. You I think we've talked about this. honestly don't remember doing this story. I think we talked about it a few months ago. It hasn't been that long ago. You're recycling stuff faster and faster <laughs> No, than you ever used to. I don't think so. <laughs> this we've done this. <laughs> Moving right along, Stuart Levy, <laughs> a top university genesis, uh, geneticist. Did I say it wrong the last time too? <laughs> they said uh, we shouldn't be swayed by the advertising campaigns. Some germs are good for us. So there you go. You're right. I know we did talk about this. I know we did. Not too long ago. I mean, it was like recently. Well, I'll quit looking in the same places for stories, and I'll <laughs> spend hours and hours searching the web, and I'll find some new stuff. Matter of fact, it'll be so new, I'll make it up as we go. How's that sound? That's what CNN does. <laughs> <laughs> that is not funny. Okay, that's funny, but that's not nice. Coming up, we've got some good news. That is on the way. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. And I think this is really good news. And I think this is something that could catch on all over the place. I found this video online. It's really cool. Uh, a sidewalk outside of an Islamic center became a collage filled with messages of love, peace, and support. And this could be any sidewalk anywhere. But they're saying that they, they had some people who were, you know, not so love-filled that were in this neighborhood. So uh, people decided, you know what, we're going to go out here and we're going to put messages of love and hope and peace. I think this is a good idea. Yeah. I think, like, every church in America should do this. It's just sidewalk chalk. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. But they use sidewalk chalk to put messages of love. And I think that is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant idea. I mean... And if you have a business to to go out in front of your business and write messages of love, you know, for each other, I think that's just such a cool idea. Yep. So uh, if I was kind of looking through this here, it says, uh, I don't know, it's just really neat. There was a bunch of different like pictures of smiley, happy things. And I mean, how could you possibly walk by that and not have it brighten your day? Right. I think it's really cool. I think so, it's very sweet. Anyway, I've got a, the video if you'd like to see it at facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. And it's a new week. And you know what that means? What does that mean? 
we have another chance for you to submit your Dear John letter. We got some good ones, so we, we're hopefully going to have time to get two of them on at least this week. And I would love, love, love if you would send us some, because we haven't picked the one we're going to answer on the radio yet. We haven't. Every Dear John letter will be answered because we're going to respond back to you through Facebook as well. Uh, and if you don't have Facebook, there's other ways to reach out to us. Send me a message on Facebook and I'll tell you how. <laughs> well, that's not going to work. No, but uh, anyway, like I said, we would, we'd would love to have your Dear John letter on this week. And if you cannot do it through that, you can also send us an email. Send it to us at johnandheidyshow.com. Facebook would be a whole lot easier. And then I can just click reply right back to you. And then I can also post it on there. It's all anonymous. Nobody will know that it's you. So we can uh, we can do that and have some fun. Last week was the first week. It was fun. It was fun. I think we changed lives, Heidi. I think we did. That's, so, that's what we're here for. Every Thursday now, we're going to be doing that. Dear John Letters on the John and <laughs> Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday.